What's up, folks? Today I'm going to be uh, reviewing the game All the King's Men. This game came out in 1979 from Parker Brothers, and it is for two players. Now, All the King's Men is a variant of the game chess, as you can probably tell by the picture. And the object of this game is you are going to be trying to capture your opponent's king. Uh, now, the main differences between this and chess is, number one, you're only going to be having uh, three types of pieces that you're going to be playing with on your side, the king, the knight, and then the archers. Um, and the other main difference is that your directions are going to be determined by whatever spaces that you land on the board. So, let's show you All the King's Men. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and show you the components really quick. Not too much here. Uh, the first thing you have here is your game board, and uh, you'll notice that uh, each of the squares have these different arrows pointing in different directions on it, and I'll talk about how that works here in just a minute. Um, you have three basic pieces that are in this game. Uh, the first piece you have is your archer over here. The second piece you have is your knight, and of course the third piece that you have is your king. Uh, now the object of the game is you're going to be trying to uh, capture your opponent's king, uh, similar to chess. Uh, now the way it works is uh, each of these pieces has a different movement rule. Um, the first one with the archers is the archers are going to be allowed to move uh, one space uh, forward, backward, or whatever direction the arrow tells you. Uh, the knights will be able to move as many spaces as the board will allow, similar to a queen in chess. And then the king here will be allowed to move one space uh, at a time as well, along with the archers. Uh, now, basically what these arrows mean is this is going to tell you what direction you're going to be able to move your piece while you're on that square. So if I wanted to move this archer over here, I would either be able to move him here or move him here. Um, so let's just say I decide to move him there. Now, on my next turn, uh, if I decide to move this piece, I'll be able to move him here or here or behind me like so because that is the direction of the arrows. Now, the knight will be able to move as many spaces as the board will allow him to. Uh, so let's just, for example, say that uh, I had a knight over here. I can move him all the way over here and capture this knight if I wanted to. Or I could just move him to uh, any square uh, between there and the space that he can move furthest from. It moves similar to a queen. And the same thing with the knight. Uh, whatever square he ends up on next, uh, on next time he decides to move that piece, he'll be able to move in any direction uh, that this space will allow him to. So this knight would be able to move here, 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 so he could actually do something like that. Uh, now the king will be allowed to move one square at a time, so if I decided to move the king, uh, I would be able to just move him one square like that. Again, following what the arrows say. Um, on my next turn, if I wanted to, I could move him here, or I could move him here, etc. And so that's basically how the game works. Pretty simple. Now, uh, in order to capture a piece, uh, all I would simply have to do is I would just have to move my piece uh, onto that square where the piece is at. So I would be able to, say, capture uh, this archer with this piece like so uh, because the direction would allow me to move into that square and then uh, capture him like that. Now, an interesting thing is, let's say I happen to have a knight over here and it was this guy's turn. Uh, even though I am next to him, I would not be able to capture him because there is no arrow that is pointing in that direction. Uh, so you could technically move a piece right next to him and not be captured. Conversely, uh, since the knight is a square where he can go in any direction, he would be able to go ahead and capture this guy like so. Now let's say uh, that I have my king over here and I have my knight and he can actually take the king on the next turn. What he's going to do is he's going to announce threat. So uh, what this guy, so what this player is going to have to do is he either is going to have to uh, place another piece in front of the king and block him, like so. Uh, he'll have to move his king out of the way, or he'll have to find a way to capture the threatening piece. So let's just say the knight, for example, was over there and he called a threat. Um, I could use this knight, for example, if he was there to go ahead and knock him out, and that would resolve the threat. And so basically, gameplay is going to continue on like this, and the game is going to end when the king is unable to uh, move out of the way of a threat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is All the King's Men. So, what are my final thoughts on All the King's Men? Uh, well, when you're reviewing games like this that are variants of chess or checkers, um, I find that they're typically no better or no worse than those games uh, because they play similar but they have different rules. I think All the King's Men uh, falls into that category. Uh, so if you like strategy games, this was a game that you probably would end up enjoying. Now when I played this game, uh, one thing I noticed is that you've got to be careful because um, when the, you see the directions on the board and you're looking around, you have to not only uh, pay attention to the piece since 
since uh, they move different amounts, the knights and the archers, but you also have to be sure to watch the directions that they are going to be able to move on their next turn uh, because they can actually end up surprising you and capturing one of your pieces and you just totally did not see it. Um, another unique thing about this game is that you can actually move one of your pieces next to an opposing piece, but he's not going to be able to capture you because he's not going to be able to move in that direction. So that's another part of the strategy that you uh, have to uh, be aware of is that you are going to be actually able to do that and then setting your pieces up uh, in order to make the best uh, possible future moves as well. Uh, so I like this game. Uh, as far as do I like it better than chess, I'd say I probably like it about the same. Uh, chess is not a game that I play that much. Uh, I'm not the type of guy that can think like 11 moves ahead. Uh, but I enjoy playing it when I do play it. It's, uh, it's really good for the brain. And uh, I would say that this is a uh, simpler version of chess. It certainly is really easy to learn. I mean, you only have three pieces, and, uh, you know, there are three different move rules uh, for all the pieces really simple to learn. I got this game at a thrift store for about two dollars. I think this normally goes for about twelve dollars on eBay plus the shipping. So if you see this game I would definitely uh, get it for sure. Um, it's a cool little strategy game. The pieces are really nice. Um, I like the way they're sculpted. I think they're made of plastic but they still look really nice uh, for the pieces and stuff. So all in all uh, I like this game but it's nothing I would say that's uh, better or worse than checkers or chess or games like that. So guys, that's my review of All the King's Men. I hope you all have a great day and keep on gaming.